Extreme Foolishness TV here. This is where I talk about extreme foolishness that goes on around you. This video has been requested by several of you guys and I appreciate the request. I'm sorry it came a little bit late, but better late than never. This Ebony K. Williams story has so much extreme foolishness sauce. We had to do it. Let's play the first video. I'm going to play a series of videos and offer my reactions as we go. Let's go. Would you date a bus driver? You. Would you date if a bus driver? If he owns the bus. If he owns no. it. If he owns the bus. See, that's, a that's a problem. That's a problem. Okay. Because the standards and requisites, and I'm not talking about him laying on his sofa playing video games all day. <laughs> I'm not talking about mm -hmm. that, but the standards and the criteria that we use to measure men is off for who mm -hmm. we are as women and who they are in this society. I would date a bus driver mm -hmm. if he was, if he loved driving the bus, if he was a man of integrity, if he was good to his mama, if he treated me well, I would date a bus driver. But we think that it's another human being's responsibility to give us what we need instead of us building together. I can build with a bus driver. Mm -hmm. I'd have my little stash over on the side in my prenup, but I could build with a bus driver. <laughs> and Ayala Van Zandt is right. Well, the problem with people like Ebony K. Williams is that they're the type of women who want to meet a man at the end of the finish line. She says she wouldn't date a bus driver, but she would date the guy or the bus driver if he owns the bus. Remember, a lot of people who, owns, who own buses today started as drivers. A lot of people who own businesses today started as employees. But to a mind like Ebony Williams, she wouldn't get that because she's so focused on being with this gold digger mentality where you just got to meet a man at the finish line? Just think about it. Even if you had the resources to own the bus, it's more prudent to start as a bus driver. I'm an attorney. I have a lot of clients who get their CDL, and I was advised them to start as an employee of a company, drive the truck for maybe a year, two years, gain some experience before becoming an owner-operator. It is not prudent to just start from uh, start from day one and become the boss and own the boss and own your business. That is a problem. And what Ayala Van Zandt was trying to tell her, but she wouldn't get it, is that the criteria that you use to pick men is flawed. That is why you're going to be making wrong decisions because your methodology is wrong. It's not about the result. It's about the methodology. If you're trying to like do a mathematical equation, you're going to know, make sure you do it the right way to arrive at the right answer. Instead of her to look for character, person who loves what they're doing, somebody who's hardworking, who has goals. She, Ayala is not saying that you should pick a guy who works at, I mean, who plays video games all day. But just because somebody is an employee does not mean that they're not going places. It's for you to identify those character traits in somebody was going places and built with that person. I think some of the criteria that we look for in the reality of today keeps us unhappy, keeps us angry, mm. keeps us in balance. And then when the men show up, we want to beat them up because they're not living up to our standards and criteria. And, and it's not working, beloved. It's just not working. So it's not that it's bad or wrong, it's obsolete. It's obsolete. Mm. We have to come up with a new way of being. I don't believe in carrying a man. A man has to do for himself. And Ayala is right. You don't have to carry a man, you gotta do for himself. But that doesn't mean that you gotta meet that man at the finish line. Ebony, I'm sure what Ayala was saying was going in through one ear and coming out through the other ear. She's not gonna get it. She's a lost cause. She's done. It's sad that a lot of young, impressionable women will listen to a woman like this and learn the wrong things, especially making lifelong decisions. You don't have to beat a man up, but ask her, will she date a dope boy? She probably would date a dope boy. Will she date a PPP scammer? You're damn right she's going to date a PPP scammer.
Look at Marjorie Taylor. She's dated multiple drug dealers just because they're making money. Just because someone is making money doesn't mean that that money is going to be sustainable on the long run. That's why a lot of those women will pick the wrong man just because they're flashing money in the club, flashing money in social media, or whatever it is that they're doing. And there's no longevity. And they become broke and dusty men after they date them. Or they end up in prison and they're back in the streets looking for Steve Harvey to save their dusty ass. But you know what? Abner Williams, she went back to her show. She doubled down. She said, hell no. I'm going to keep spilling more. And what do they say about foolish people? They keep sp spitting more foolishness. There's absolutely nothing wrong with driving a bus. My mother Gloria drove one for years. But could it be that black America has been sold a narrative of average, regular, and typical being good enough for us? Hmm. Well, see, that's called white supremacy. And that is gaslighting at its finest. What does white supremacy has to do with it? Have to do with this situation. White supremacy ain't got nothing to do with it. Don't bring the white supremacists here. Leave the white supremacists for another argument when it's relevant. Somebody like Ebony K. Williams, she's probably intelligent, maybe smart, but she's a fool. You can be smart and be foolish. Being foolish does not mean that you're intrinsically smart. It just means that you can just don't get it. For her, she thinks that her not wanting to pick a man with character or her wanting to wait and pick a man at the finish line has to do with white supremacists. Don't bring white supremacy here. That whatever situation you are, is as a result of your own choices and wrong decisions and your refusal to learn from people who have wisdom, like Ayala Van Zandt. In this case, it takes the form of conditioning black Americans to happily accept being a permanent American underclass. Oh my God. But see, because I know the truth about black folk in America, no, average is not and will never be good enough for me. And the gag is, I don't think it's good enough for you either. So you see her, she has now created a red herring argument and she started gaslighting by bringing white supremacists. Well, the people who are, who, ha who have nothing to say, they make up alternate arguments by creating red herring or straw man arguments. They start to gaslight. Now she's now made it about white supremacists, about wanting the best for black America and wanting the best for black men. You do not want the best for black men because your statements are completely foolish and demeaning to black men. By saying you can't date a bus driver, that is an assault on the very, very good, hardworking men and women who are working regular jobs. Well, I didn't want to call it regular jobs. We're working jobs. Just because you are in a career or your career choice doesn't mean you're below. And because you're a bus driver now, today doesn't mean you're going to be a bus driver forever. Just because you work at McDonald's today doesn't mean that you're going to become, you're not going to become a McDonald's CEO tomorrow. Just because you work as an employee at this firm or as a cashier at a bank or as a um, teller at a bank doesn't mean that you're not going to own your business some other day. I've met so many people who started from the bottom, but because of hard work, grit, determination, and perseverance, they were able to rise to the top. So out of the 50,000 plus comments posted on social, I only saw a handful that even considered the possibility of a bus owner being a more aspirational position and recognizing that I am actually speaking and pouring into the ascension of black men. There you go. Red herring arguments, straw man arguments, bus driver. She's talking about being people didn't think about owning the bus as an aspirational position. That is not what your statement was. Your statement was you would never date a bus driver unless he owned the bus. You never say you would never date a bus driver who doesn't aspire to own a bus. You would never date a bus driver. You, didn't, you just said you would never date a bus driver unless he owned the bus. Even if that bus driver is determined, working hard, working towards owning the bus. But if he owns the bus, if he's successful, they want to be there at the finish line 
to come and secure the bag. When I said what I said, but see, no, some of y'all were too busy naming and shaming me personally and black women in general as undesirable gold diggers and much worse. Now, I suspect that some of y'all are the same men that were bringing home C's and D's on your report cards, only to then be coddled by parents that said, well, that's okay, as long as you're doing your best. There you go. What does you having to pick a man who is hardworking have to do with kids coming home with C's and D's? And for your information, Ebony, a lot of folks who had C's and D's in college or in high school are business multi-millionaire or billionaire business owners right now. There's a lot of people who dropped out from college who have become multi-millionaires and billionaires right now. As a matter of fact, in law school, a lot of the folks who made C's and D's, I don't say D's, you need a C to graduate, but a lot of the C students are the ones who are making all the money right now. The A students in law school usually become professors. The B students, the A's and B students usually become professors or A students become professors. Some A students work at big firms and B students will get jobs that maybe other uh, with the DA's office or whatever it is that they get. And C students typically are the ones who are successful in terms of making money and they hire the A's and B students. It goes across the board. A lot of C's and B students. And again, if your determination is that you don't want to date a bus driver, that bus driver could have been an A student too. There are a lot of people who get A's. Just because you went to school and got A's doesn't mean that you're going to be successful financially or you'll be successful in life. It takes more than A's and B's to become successful in this game called life. And I'm sure she would probably date a dope boy or date a PPP scammer who never even went to college just because he got money. Well, listen, I love and believe in the excellence of black men. So no, my dear, C's and D's or any other form of mediocrity is not okay. No, I will not create a soft place for you or anybody that I love to fall comfortably into the bigotry of low expectations. So I'm going to say one more time. You see, the bigotry of low expectations. So being a bus driver has somehow means that it is a bigotry of low expectation. This is an assault on black men and she dated a white guy for three or four years or so and supposedly they broke up after he spent uh the quarantine he spent the first months of the uh of the pandemic with his kids instead of her maybe that guy was smart and he knew why he stayed away from her let me know what you guys think in the comments foolish people always make foolish decisions a fool will always be a fool Wise people learn from the counsel of others. Someone like Ebony Williams, I'm sorry, she's a lost cause. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Somebody who's lost is lost forever. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Hit the bell. I, I appreciate you guys for listening and watching. Stay safe out there, my lovely people. And most importantly, say no to extreme foolishness.